Do 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 do. Just have some Inquisition music working in the background. Oh, my skate broke. <laughs> Who needs escape? Hello! Hello. Are you looking forward to this? Very much. I need to check out how I sound actually, because I'm not sure if I'm very loud or very quiet. Well, we should invite the others to check if they are an acceptable sound too. No, you're fine. Um, but I just, if you could, well actually, if you could pop up the stream and listen to yourself. <laughs> And see how the sound levels work out, that would be great. See how I balance out with you. Right. I will have to sort of talk then. Yeah, well, I'll talk with you, alongside you, and just go blah 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 blah. But, uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, see, blah 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 blah. And then after the, we've done these testings, I'll add Griffith, because I don't know where Man Malakin is. Malakin seems to have died and disappeared off the face of the world. No. Why am I adding other people to the call? Malakin is in the stream chat, so uh, uh, he just needs to go on Skype. Malakin, get your butt on Skype. There we go. That's that's Grimoth. No, Malakin just looked on. Ah. <laughs> I'm muting the stream. It's too weird here, listening to all the echo. Healing me. It okay. goes. Hello, Malakin. Sorry about that, I've got to send back on Skype. I have my computer fully screened. It's alright. That's fine. We'll just blame you for everything. Ah, uh, that's fine. There we go. <laughs> alright. Uh, if you want, if you give me a second, I'll give you like the server details and stuff like that. Well, sure. sure. Yeah. It's been so hard to to sort of not have having to do any preparation at all. Is it really that awkward? So like I that's what I usually dedicate time to, so <laughs> Okay. Right. Felt so like I got nothing to do but I just spread up a bit on the rules, so I'll I'll wait till Grimith like accepts the call and then I'll pass you the server details. But uh well it, actually we need to match you don't we? Yeah. I have that. Right. And I'm still in the group. Okay. There we go. I can see you online. I think, yeah, the, I think that was the password, wasn't it? Yeah. Is the server up? Uh, server's up. Um. I can't remember what the details are though. Like I know um For the Hamachi or For the Hamachi it's just the name and the password and stuff. Ah, okay. Uh I'll give it to you when Grimith's back, because he needs to restart his computer. Alright. Malakin, you're okay with using the Hamachi? Uh, yeah. Cool. Just joining the network. Uh, wait, how does a Scottish accent make it confusing? Make what confusing? Malakin's not Scottish. Well, I don't think you're Scottish. What? No, <laughs> I'm English. Apparently me and you sound similar. The fact that we're both speaking sure. English, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well... Yeah, if so I should be. Let's see, how can I set this up so I can see the chat without 
getting everything in the way. Apparently, okay. Uh, people are telling me Malakin now sounds quiet. Uh, straight up, just uh, several people, if you can actually fix this for me. How do we all sound? Do I sound too loud? Do they sound too quiet? What right, levels? Okay. Um, the thing is, they need to, to know who is talking, what name is. So. Right. Uh, the lovely voice that's just there. Uh, Manakai, if you can talk for me. Yeah, I'll talk. I'm Manakai. Uh, okay. Talking now. And Malakin. Hello, I'm Malakin. I'm talking at the moment. Alright, so Malakin, I think you could probably turn your volume up by about 10 or 20 percent. Okay, I'll try that in a second. Just trying to join this matchy server. Mana is fine. Mana is perfect, apparently. <laughs> hmm. Griff is loud and clear. Manakai is a little softer. Malakin is quite a bit quieter. So, yeah, boost up by about 25 percent. You're fine. <laughs> I sound fabulous. <laughs> Darling, I sound fabulous. It seems like it keeps telling me the wrong password. Are you sure that it is not the right, DM password? Uh, the password for map tools is. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's a different one. That's the oh. password for map tools. Yeah, that's true. That's why. It's just when we did it, you know. Yeah, but I gave you GM rights. Am I sounding oh. better now? You. Bit more, bit quieter. So a bit louder, please. It's like it was just mm. connected. As a if DM. you if you want, you can actually use Skype to turn up your volume. Yeah, that's what I was doing. It's at max at the moment. No, Mookie, no. Let's see if I can turn up. No links. Everything's on maximum for my microphone. Uh, uh, I guess I have to go in the control panel and sounds then. Yeah, how do you turn on microphone boost again? Uh. I need to look in that myself, actually. Jim, I wouldn't call that a rainbow of nationalities. You're like <laughs> two British people, one American. That's all sort of in the lump called English. And a Dutch, a Danishman, even. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Dutch. Don't do that. No, sorry. Um, my you don't bad. like being called English? I think you should respect other people's nationalities. Uh... You can call me European if you want. It's all right. I don't know how you turn on boost for microphones actually. I'm having a look in the properties, I can't see it. I can see levels, but not boost. That's the Hamachi details there, is it? In Skype. Yeah, the Hamachi details are there. Also, group, um, it's all black. That's fine, That's you're supposed to see all black. I'll <laughs> start the music. The music has started. Yeah, but not for me. <laughs> Apparently that network does not exist. Are mm. you sure you picked the correct name? Yeah. Um, try... And the password. No spaces, none of the brackets, just that middle one. Okay, I'll try copying and pasting it. Actually, the G in Griffin is, is a capital letter. Yeah, oh, sorry, it's all difference. all of it's capitalized. It's and heresy is also capital letter. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you have to have. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Oh, that music is loud. We got server details. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't have the server details. You've got the name. Oh no, that's the IP for the yeah. And the password for the map tools server is there. The last one's the password you enter. Okay. Who's people messaging me? People are telling uh no, um Neil Goat Malkin's as loud as he's gonna get, he's maxed everything. Yeah, sorry guys. Um I might be able to it's, um, it's weird that I hear you're loud, but they don't. Yeah, that is kind of Um, fun. I'm gonna try something. I'll uh -oh. actually turn you up on my side. Just a little bit. By about 5%. Can you turn up specific people? No, I turn up everyone. Oh. Like, if also, Grimith comes in, uh, it'll be definitely mm. loud. <laughs> Does someone have, uh, macros for this? Um, I was halfway through making some macros. Um, 
Because I don't, I don't hurt any. But isn't just rolling a... Hang on. 100? Shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, it's fairly straightforward. It's not that bad. Let's make one for that, then. Four macro sets. Oh, whoops. Whoops. What? Uh, I forgot to save. I made two sets of macros, one which would work um, if my I was able to edit my character's um, stats, and the other one which uh, just asks you what the uh, information is. And I forgot to save the, uh, the more useful one. Since I doubt you want to mess around with changing all the, the stats for the characters and stuff, Griff. Yeah. We, You know, sure. campaign properties. Okay. I get, if you're gonna, a lot of the rules, um, I get, you know, you've read through them. Like, a lot of the rules are predominantly D100. I've still got my quick dice here, though, so that's fine. That's fine. Um, but you basically, a lot of the tests I'm gonna give you, like, say for example, uh, you spot a trap. You do a percep, mm. I say, do a perception test. And I'll say it's very difficult, so it'll be a negative 20. So instead of it being 40 to pass, it's 20 to pass. Uh-huh. So, there you go, so that's that. And for Grimith, I'll give you the details. Uh, yeah. Grimith, you need Ooh, to be actually. in the... I might be yeah. able to get these to work pretty easily. It'll take a few minutes. Giving me that doesn't help, Griffin. I can't join the network ID. Oh, that's no. what it is? It's yeah. not the numbers? It's, okay. it's a name, sorry. That was my bad. Hello, Grimith. Um, and also, hello. Oh. There we go, and the you've got the IP address now because you can see it from Himachi. But in case it's and what was the port again? I I can't see it. You guys can help to help me out in that one. What was the what? It was the default port. Yeah. If you can write that one down for me, because I, um, I can't see right. it. I believe that's one. I've, I've got people betting on breaking stuff first. All right. Breaking stuff. What okay. So now I've got to set up XSplit. Guess I'll just talk to the chat. Or something. Yeah, please do. So, chat, how are you feeling? Chat, how are you all doing? There's 140 of you. Surely you have something pleasant and fun and exciting to say. Why does it constantly just print everything out like that? Print what? Everything out like what? Uh, Ned, we have made characters um, already. Can you see the uh, the checks yeah. I'm rolling? Yes. Does it read it out like uh, roll equals d100 equals roll equals 32 equals 32? Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to collapse everything down so you don't see that, you just see the result. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. I think you need use tooltips for inline rolls enabled in the chat. Um, part of the interactions preferences. I, I don't know. If everyone needs that enabled, or if it's just the GM. It's quite a long macro we've got. <laughs> that is a very it's long not macro. that complicated. Mine, this is roll 1d100. Yeah. What was the thing in the preferences that you said? Uh, go into preferences, then in interactions, which should be the first tab open in chats on the right hand side, there is uh, use tooltips for inline rolls. Alright, okay, ticked. Try again. Okay. No, oh, that well that's a text as well, so... What's the problem? Maybe it's suppressed tooltips? I'll try that one as well. Yeah, I'm macro expert, my shit Arr. works just fine, I don't know about you. <laughs> uh, mine doesn't. But it was working just fine a moment ago. <laughs> sure. So what's the problem then, Grimith? You're the macro expert. 
Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> You're the one who's like, I slaved away for months to create these intricate systems of macros. Okay, I fully automated the game, man. See, that's your problem. <laughs> oh, fully automated the game, Jesus. Well, yeah, the other Inquisitor that we were going to play. It's a heck of a lot more complicated than this one. I mean, that's the macro I designed for my, my Great Axe attack earlier today. That's it. That's the most complex it gets for me. Yeah, let's see if I can show you one of these. I'll print, post it in the, uh, the chat. I'm of the, the mind that if someone wants to share a working one, <laughs> I'll gladly accept it. If not, I'll just have to do with rolling 1d100. There we go, that's a macro to fire a uh, bolt gun uh, in Inquisitor. Alright, just tell me when See, you guys are ready. <laughs> Whoa, that's a... You're relying upon stuff that wouldn't, that might be in your campaign maps, which don't exist within Griffins? Like, um, you don't no, have I characteristics... So doing that. So you don't have characteristics to keep track of, like, ammo or shots within the campaign token properties. Oh, no, 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 that was for a different game. That was just... That's the one I was uh, gloating about. <laughs> doing. I was going to say, that I understand what yours is doing right now. Thanks. <laughs> uh... Yeah, no. I don't get it, because I modified this one. The only thing it was doing was... Um, asking the token for a property, but I've gotten rid of that, I've replaced it with a, a just an integer. Well, I said, just tell me when you guys are ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I can start <laughs> now. Just not use the macros. I'm Premier. Malachi? Yeah. Manakai? Yeah, I, I say I'm ready. Alright. Still, no macros, but well, I'm sure we'll make do. We have a place we can focus on where we can drag our tokens onto the map, or don't worry, you'll get that soon. I just I want to do a wee bit of prologue first before you can slap your tokens places. Sure. God prologue. You all find yourselves awaken on some form of ship. You you just you're on a ship. You're like what the fuck. Uh, I'm pretty sure all you'd be very confused and very dazed by this experience. Um, looking around the ship, it's looks like a ship. It's metal, there's platings, there's windows, you think, on the walls. Uh, there's people. But on front of you, right on your lap, there's a data tab. A data slab. And, if you give me a second, because now, now, this is the control parts that I need to figure out. You see this. This is on the data slab that's in front of you. <laughs> Inquisitor Griffin. The author, Inquisitor Griffin, subjects the mission briefing. The name of who has written it is Aid Diamocles. Location, Josian Breach of the Sector Calixus. Axis Grade, Acolyte. Acolytes, you find yourselves aboard the Imperial transport vessel, the Dichondrius, on its way to a newly discovered space hulk within the Josian Reach region of the Calixus Sector. Prove your faith and duty to the Emperor. The Inquisitor Griffin decrees that this Space Hulk is a security threat and must be dealt with. Your objective is to provide reconnaissance of the Hulk so we can insert demolition teams to absolve this abomination on Imperium space. Although we have recognised no discernible life signs on the Hulk, the warp influence of these Hulks is known to be interesting, and as such cannot be trusted. You are to treat any living entities with extreme prejudice. All inhabitants of the ship, should you encounter any, are to be treated as corrupt and heretical. Destroy their physical bodies and let their emperor judge their eternal soul. Should you succeed in this task, extraction will be provided at the nearest docking port. Make the emperor proud. So, no memory of what happened before. We could have been doing our own little things. We just wake up and surprise we're on a ship. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. So, oh, fair enough. you sit and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, fair enough. So, I'm just going to bring you over to where you can put your tokens down. Alright, just give me a second. As I said, I'm trying to figure out this because I've got a lot of controls that I need to figure out. Terminate everything with extreme prejudice. There That's you go. Be you like, can put your uh, tokens down there. It's going to be like every single mission, right? 
<laughs> Kinda. So we wake up, we have data slates on our laps, and all of a sudden, fucking soldiers! <laughs> Pretty much, you just like, you just sort of, you know, you've woke up, it feels as if you've woke up from a nap. Uh, just a case of like, you know, you're walking down a road, and all of a sudden, boom, you're in a ship. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so you can place your guys down wherever you fancy. Hold on a second. Oh, Marcus Dushitus. Uh, let's edit this. Oh, get away from me! No huggles! No huggles! Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. there we go. So, now you guys can interact if you fancy. You can talk to one another. You can look around the ship. You can explore, talk to people. Whatever. You guys can take over for a little bit at the moment. Um, Marcus looks around, um, clearly a little confused as to how he got here. Um, he looks around for someone who looks like they have an explanation. You see several guardsmen, an inquisitor, and someone at the helm of the ship. An inquisitor? Sorry, uh, someone that looks like an officer. They're wearing not soldier gear, not like the flak armor of the Imperial Guardsmen, but they're looking very smart. Do they have any symbols on them? Yes. They have several signs of the Imperial Guard and the Imperium on their clothes. Okay. Um, so not actually a member of the Inquisition then? No. There's no signs of the Inquis Inquisition or any logos that you can see on the soldiers that design the Inquisitor or Inquisition. Um, I... I look at the sort of the, the data plate again, uh, and then I try to remember what's the last thing I remember before being here. That's entirely up to you. Uh, you can talk about your backstory. You can figure out. All right. Well, the the last thing he remembers was uh, was going to sleep <laughs> in his uh, in his sort of bed on on, on Tarsus probably, and he well. In memory, this seems like a very long time ago, so obviously a little confused, but in context of what the data slate says, uh, he's not going to draw attention to himself yes. at the so present time. Anyone else fancy interacting, talking, sharing anything? My character's actually just going to sit there and shut up. <laughs> All right. Grimmith? Varg Vargos is staring at the data slate, like, ooh, and he's going to interface with it. I reckon, just like, like, okay, this is real. You know, fucking shit's coming out from behind his robes and everything. He's staring at the data slate. He's looking around. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks by him. And he's thinking to himself, I don't remember falling asleep. I... <laughs> okay. I'm normally a light sleeper. I should have woken up here. What? And he's really like, Inquisition. You know, looking back up, looking back down. Just shaking his head. All right. So your actual interface with the data slate. Yes. Let's right. go with that. Sure. Uh, you actually find the data slate is actually empty. The only thing on it is this information that you're able to read. There are stamps and proof that this was entered in by seemingly uh, an aide of the uh, administratum. Uh, apart from that, there is nothing on it. There's no signs. It looks just like a stock. Uh, data stay late from the administratum. Well, as this has happened, and as you're searching, the pilot, well, the person at the hub, uh, voices up, and in a very robotic voice, states, "Landing in five minutes. Prepare yourselves." And on this mark, the uh, officer that you've seen uh, stands up. Ah, you filthy maggots! We are here to uphold the duty of the Emperor! You will do your duty if you serve your time, and you will succeed! And, of course, all the Imperial Guardsmen all just suddenly, are like, they just become even stiffer than they looked. But one of them um, decides to go, uh, But! And as soon as he says something, the Commissar shoots him in the head. Shoots him dead, straight out. Uh, unfortunately, killing him. 
And this silences the rest of the guys, of course, stiffening them even more. Any other questions? He looks around the ship and he actually he notices you three. Doesn't give you much look, just looks at you and then looks back to his guardsmen. No? Good. Do your emperor's duty and prepare for yourself. And he turns back to you three. You lot! Aye. It's fine to see that you have awoken. And he walks over. Standing quite between Marcus and Vargos. <laughs> I was told to carry you sleeping lambs aboard my vessel. Now, you are my passengers. I... Hope you will do your own duty. I was told to make sure you left the vessel at the first docking port. I was told these... And he, he taps the slate that Va um, Vargos is holding. These are your orders. and These will accommodate all of your questions. Do you have any? His pistol is still noticeably steaming hot from the last shot he just done. Hmm? Vargos hmm? Uh, shakes his head. Ah, good. It is good to see that the <laughs> Acolytes know their place and they know their orders. Um, you can. He looks down at the other Imperial Guard. He looks at Mithras. Well, I say Imperial Guard. He looks at Mithras and wanders down. Ah, uh, you are very lucky. If you were in my platoon, you don't look like you would last a day. It's yes, Commissar. <laughs> very lucky, Commissar. Mm, even though you know your place, you look feeble and pathetic. He just wanders yes, Commissar. off. He looks at Marcus and he goes, oh, God, you! <sighs> Just walks on, that's it. And then looks at the tech priest and goes, I despise you. I gave you this pistol to look at it. It only had a nick of a scratch. It took you four days to return it. Just a scratch. Four days. Ah, oh, pathetic group of people. He just walks off. Vargos is naturally going to assume that uh, that was a failure on the part of the flesh and not actual tech priest. And just <laughs> let the commissar continue about his day. Uh, pilot Marcus, uh, looks angry. Although uh, the display of a force of shooting guardsmen uh, makes him not react in any negative way. Okay. So he's, you know, turns off. You guys can continue interacting. He's now wandering over, barking at each of the men in turn over here. Oh, my character's going to sit to attention, staring straight ahead. Oh. I suppose we didn't have an introduction of who the fuck we were to uh, anyone That's who a good was point. watching. Well, now you guys can do that. Left, left to right. Right? Left to right. Just... So, Mithras Kalidon, introduce yourself. Okay. Um, my character is a guardsman, or a, a skitari, to be precise, which is a, uh, a warrior of the uh, Abdeptus Mechanicus. Um... He has uh, just general Imperial Guardsman training, uh, good with las guns, grenades, that sort of thing. Um, he is... Uh, where's my stats gone? He is uh, 1.75 meters tall, uh, fair skin color, brown hair, brown eyes, uh, 70 kilograms of weight, and is a fit build. Where's long walks on the beach? <laughs> um, a white male looking for action. <laughs> Uh, his uh, div uh, divination is uh, truth sub is subjective, which will be interesting. All right. Uh, there's a fair amount of backstory, but I won't go into that now. Okay. So, Marcus yeah. Duchtius. Marcus Duchtius is a noble, um, but before that, he is a cleric of the emperor. Of the, um, he is from Tarsus, where he worked in the Cathedral of Illumination. Uh, he also lived as a noble, never really experienced the poorer sides of life. Um, due to his quite substantial wealth, he's, uh, he's wearing advanced uh, pieces of armor, heavy plates layered on top of each other, um, with a hood of very uh, advanced and light armor material uh, protecting his head. Um, well, he's uh, also a white male with uh, with white hair and grey eyes. He has a wiry um, build and is about uh, 175 meters tall. 
Uh, he does not look very robust, um, clearly having lived a, an easy life. Uh, yeah, his whole life. Okay. And Vargos Mouth Tech. Alright, uh, Vargos Mouth Tech is a tech priest. Um, age is 53, although, of course, it's difficult to discern much of anything behind the, uh, the good quality Mechanicus robes and vestments with, uh, the half-skull symbol of the Omni-Messiah upon them. Um, he is rather an imposing figure in terms of height if you were standing at a 6 foot 6, or about 2 meters, uh, courtesy of his, uh, void-born status. Uh, what little skin can be seen upon his elegant hands would be porcelain with, uh, black hair and... Uh, black eyes, uh, weighing about, we'll say, 80 kilograms, like 176 pounds-ish. Um, of course, uh, he, he is not as much very imposing compared to uh, practically every other tech priest, being as how he has not advanced far into the order, but he definitely has the machines there. And uh, the fact that he fucking interfaced with a goddamn data slate, yeah. <laughs> in regards to background, he was born uh, upon Battle of Eclipsus. He was born on the legacy, an ancient warship upon that. And uh, he learned to appreciate both knowledge and technology at a young age. Knowledge is a supreme manifestation of divinity, and he is also a follower of the Malgrisian teachings. But he would never say that to anyone. Ever. Indeed. Uh, if you're ever curious what those are you can google them or you can just patiently wait i'm pretty sure maybe elements of that might come across in sessions where dark heresy occurs so is that you feel three you feel you three uh happily introduce your characters anything else that you guys would like to say yeah you guys will find out as you go along hopefully uh, are surrounded by too much flesh already this is sickening <laughs> <laughs> so that's um Hopefully that the chat now knows. That was my bad. I'm still learning things. Hopefully the players will keep me right, and I'll try my best to keep them right, but I think they'll do a better job than me. Uh, so, and moving on. So, you feel the ship rumbling slightly, and if any of you look out the viewports that you can see, there's several around the ship. Uh, if you give me a second, you will see this. Uh, do, 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 do. And it's just to the left, but here you go. That is what you'll see. That's one hell of a Hulk. You're fucked. <laughs> so how long till we get eaten by gene stealers? <laughs> so you're. This is the space Hulk that has recently appeared in the sector, or recently appeared of the interest in the sector. Okay, guys, I know pilot spacecraft as a, uh, it's a basic skill. I got this. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> okay. Right. So you feel the ship slowly start rumbling, and it gets closer and closer until all you see from the viewports is parts of the ship, or the hulk, as it seems. And you approach the docking, and you feel the ship enter into, obviously, perhaps a docking manoeuvre as things start rumbling and clicking on the ship. And eventually, all movement stops. Commissar, you know, gets back to his feet from sitting down, and wanders over to you guys, and goes, As I said before, this is your stop. On your feet and to the door. And he just looks at you. He's not threatening you. He's not. He's got a gun pointed at you, but uh, he does look quite menacing. Mithras stands, salutes, and heads towards the door. <laughs> Marcus, Marcus just is going to. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Marcus just stands up and sort of walks to the door, not really looking at the commissar. We ha uh, Vargos has all of his equipment. All of your equipment. All right. He's got a pocket the data slate then. And uh, I guess with a uh, no particular care thing, he is going to unsheath his great axe because that's totally <laughs> kept within a sheath in these day and age. And uh, not really acknowledging the commissar, he is going to shift over towards the door. Because you know, I mean, what the fuck does he care? So, Foolish uh, meat puppet. So the commissar is now looking at the guardsman, who's not obeying his orders, and wanders over. Do you feel important, guardsman? As if Malakin's actually here. Hang on, sorry, what? 
<laughs> Commissar. Now looming over that. you because you've decided to say yes, sir, but you didn't move. <laughs> um, I'm on the wrong thing then because I can't see. Uh, anything. scroll out a little anyway. bit. I'll Here. bring you all over again. So you're all on the screen again. There we go. <laughs> so okay, okay. Let's just remove that, right? And the commissar just looks, walks over, pushes a button on the side, and the door slides away. Into the void of space. <laughs> Into the void of space. You know, it just slides away and says, "Out." Good thing I'm accustomed to the void. <laughs> and so, you know. is gonna uh, unshoulder his. Uh, the commissar smiles Last and goes, gun. Emperor, be with you. And the door shuts behind him. Now, right, give me a second. Boom. You feel a rumbling, and suddenly, as soon as the door is shut, the shuttle's gone. It's gone. You know, you can. You, something's rumbling, something's moving. Oh, bugger. Some, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, you know, you're in it. And the door in front of you opens. Now you guys can, you know, decide what you want. You're not in combat, you can move around. Do Describe the room, its appearance. Like, how you, does it look? You wander in. The room looks very run down. There's rust, there's broken pieces, there's scrap metal. There's some... The lights are working, miraculously. There is power to the area. But the area looks as if it's been in space for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But there's things, there's lights working. Uh, as you look around, there are barrels, there are crates, there are things flashing lights. Tell me about this terminal that uh, Vargos has now turned his attention to. You can look in the terminal... And as you walk up to it, you see it's actually two doors. One green, one red. The green door is on the left, basically where you're standing. It, the closest to you is a green, which shows the door you've just came in is green. <laughs> and on the other side is a red door. Is there any sort of controls or way to interact or interface with this terminal? It's a touch screen. You can touch the screen to interact with it. I suppose this door that we just came from, uh, Vargos is going to touch that. And the door shuts. You know, it's nice, clean shink, and it shuts behind you. I presume the other door's another airlock. Probably the, shouldn't open it. The door you shut is still green. The other door is red. Um, Mithras is going to um, unsling his last gun uh, and shoulder it and watch the uh, southernmost door. So, uh, there are other ways, like the terminal is obviously pointing to the other doors that are in this room? Or it only has two doors on the screen. One green, one red. And okay. just to say, it signifies looking, this is the green door, and this is the red. That's what it looks like on the screen. Is there a way, like, I, I've been, a, Vargos has been uh, living on ships for most of his life. Can he, you know, gauge, like, what this means specifically? Uh, well, interacting and tapping the machine and figuring out what it means, it shows that the red door is malfunctioning heavily and shows it cannot be opened. While the green door means that it is functional and able to be used as by standard procedure. Argos is going to let out a sigh and uh, he's going to leave the terminal to uh, take a closer look at this door. As you look at the door, you notice the door isn't just malfunctioning, it is actually welded together. Not by random tools, it actually looks as if it's two separate doors melded together. Well, uh, Vargos is capable of fixing things, but uh, seeing welded shit together, there's no way he's going to be able to get a quick back job, uh, patch job to open this one. She just shakes his head and says nothing, and uh, he's going to look back at the two that are obviously going to be with him on this grand adventure and drugs at him. <laughs> Any interesting actions? Well, Marcus is right now just looking around, not being used to these kind of spaceships. He's never been on one before. Uh, 
and this place surely doesn't look like anything he's he's sort of traversed uh, before. So he's he's uh, awkwardly walking around a bit, looking looking around, trying to get a feel of the place. But uh, despite uh, the the Hulk of this ship, it's still maintaining its gravity semblance. Surprisingly, yes. There is gravity. There is actually oxygen. There is also power, and it doesn't feel. It's cold, but there is obviously working life support. You're not freezing. It's pretty impressive for a ship that's thousands of years old going through the wall. Power of technology. Yeah, technology is a wonderful thing. The machine spirit is strong within this Hulk. <laughs> Power of the Emperor. To break it up would be a terrible thing. We should <laughs> steal it. <laughs> no. Um, I can fly it. <laughs> I have navigation stellar as a basic skill too. Let's go. <laughs> Regan, first Perfect session, steal a ship. <laughs> well, close it slower than light speed towards the nearest planet. It would commonly take us like something. 30 years. Uh, Alright, okay. so that door is welded shut. Probably for a reason. I believe it that way. Um, Mithras is going to look to the other two. And just go, what now? <laughs> Marcus looks at the, at the tech priest. Um, never really seeing one before. Not, not close, at least. Uh, looks at him and looks at the door, asking, So, do you know how to do this? He's going to slowly rasp breaths through his respirator grill that uh, issues out little technical war garble every now and then, like just random electric sounds, and the little nodules that issue forth from his fingertips that he interfaces with electronics with will slither back into his body. Interface with what? <laughs> um, Marcus points to the to the terminal to the to the doors. Some of this we cannot just be stuck in this room. Vargos is going to look at the door to the south. Does it look like it's been welded shut? No, nope, it looks just as fine as the door you came in on. Does it look? The door's to the south. Yeah. So, yeah. Vargos is going to look at Marcus, and then one of his outstretched fingers will point towards the southern door. We go that way. Marcus knocks not to the guardsman. Okay, I'll move up. And the my door. character's actually been on the ship for most of his life, so he knows how to use these technologies. He smacks whatever the door release button is. And the door just slides away. It just, you know, it opens up. And you. He's still got his um, Lasgan shoulder, remember? <laughs> oh, don't worry. And you see... You can't help but think Vargo sounds like a fax machine. Yes! <laughs> and you see the and hallway. The papers, and all of a sudden a printer out my side, just like... <laughs> We've received a fax from Inquisitor Griffin. Hurry the fuck up. <laughs> you know, the, the tech uh, priest prints it off, the clerk reads it, the Imperial Guardsman shoots someone. <laughs> well, gonna, Mithras is going to quickly check the ceilings and walls. And then... The... Hallway looks a similar order to the room that you just left. It's rusted. It's there's scrap metal in the floor. There's rubbish. Uh, not anything decipherable. It is again. It looks as if it's mounds of rust and scrap He's specifically metal. Specifically looking for like areas of the floor, or wall, or ceiling that might give way if we decide to step on it. Do a perception check. Okay. Yeah. What was your perception 47. again? <laughs> um, would that be awareness? That would be awareness. Yeah, yeah. awareness skill. Ah, so that okay. means I get to use my perception at full value. So it's 37. So unfortunately I fail. Unless, you, you know, it's like an easy test. You know, get some modifiers to the skill Oh yeah, test. do we get any modifiers? That'd be nice. You it's got a plus obvious. 10, because, you know, it's a rusted hallway. You should be able to notice if anything looks a bit precarious. And he also knows a lot about ships. <laughs> okay, okay, fine, fine. You succeed anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so you're looking down the ship. You know, as, as rusty and flimsy, apparently, as this ship is, there is no immediate threat to the ship suddenly cascading. It's lasted thousands of years. Why should it choose now to fall apart? Because we're stepping on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he's going to move down to the other end of the corridor and check the door, see if it's working. 
remind me, what were these uh, these three squared uh, metallic things within the room? Uh, they are cycling. You know, there's some lights flashing on them. I'm going to assume you're interacting or analyzing them. Sure. And... Uh, can Vargos dis discern what they are? Yeah, straight out. You don't need to roll a check. Um, he is able to tell one of them is a life support machine. It's venting out some slightly warm air into the room as well as the breathable atmosphere that's allowed. The other machine just looks as if it's some form of um, hydraulics uh, for heavy lifting. The machine to your the south machine is the machine spirits alive within these? Uh, well, they look like they're working. <laughs> uh, Vargos uh, nods approvingly. <laughs> The hydraulic lifting thing, huh? Uh, Vargos will discern that perhaps that's for lifting stuff uh, in and out of, like, ships that come to latch onto this Hulk, then. As well as for lifting, it's um, it's got ports to the bottom, so it's obviously for lifting things from other rooms and onto ships and taking them from. So it is just a portable for c cargo. Like a transport bay thing. Yes. You know, that is what carries out the heavy loads and in the heavy loads. All right, Vargos is satisfied as well as satisfied he's going to be in this situation, given the fact that he just fucking woke up into this. <laughs> Maybe he's having a crazy dream. Like, who knows what the flesh is capable of when you allow the mind to wander. <laughs> he's going to clank down the, uh, the hallway. All right, and as you're doing that, Mithras has, you know, actually opened the door. <laughs> I haven't opened it yet. I was just checking to see No, if it was the door open. opens as you approach. Oh. Goddamn oh. Star Trek technology. <laughs> um, you know, you're, just, you're wandering up a you know, the door looks identical to the one that you had to push, but just opens. Fair enough. Another empty room. Is there any consoles anyway? Any sign of, like, um... The only consoles in this room are the ones to open the doors, or are beside the doors. Are there any sort of, uh, uh, direction signs or anything? Indicate what part of the ship we're on, maybe? Well, I should have said that on the computer terminal, now this is my bad, uh, so out of character I guess, Vargos was able to read it said docking bay on the terminal. All right. Okay, but are there any, there's no sort of indications as to where each of these doors might lead? No. Okay. No indication. Well. Vargos yep. frowns and he like swivels his head in confusion, you know, like trying to get his bearings aboard this vessel. You know, he's spent uh, most of his life upon one. He was born on one. He's accustomed to the void of space, and he is not seeing any sort of markings to give an idea as to where the fuck he is. You could do a perception check. <laughs> okay, we'll try that. Uh, it's a negative 20. Well? It's a negative 20. Yeah. Not only is it a negative 20, but it's halved because I don't have the, uh, the... Oh, just a straight-up perception check. Okay. Just a straight-up perception. You're, just, you're looking for stuff to see where you're going. That is a fail. Yeah. You look around, and you see some signs that say something, but it's been so long, it's indecipherable. Um, what side of the ship did we uh, enter on? You entered... Which direction would be towards the, the front? Uh, this way would be the far to the front. Okay. So the bridge is probably at the back, if I know Imperium ships correctly. <laughs> So we should probably head to the left then. Um, he's actually going to say that um, to the others. The bridge is probably to our right. Let's head in that direction. Well, oh, our right, the character's left. Okay. Yeah, that the character's then. right. He was saying that in character. Alright. Marcus nods. Not really knowing anything about Imperial ship design. Vargos is going to come along for the ride as well. Come along, Vargos. <laughs> You push a button, I'm assuming to open the door? Yep. It flashes red at you. Door doesn't yeah. open. Any sort of, like, it. alarm or thing it says? You know, like, there's a terminal to open, activate the door. Does it give a notification as to why it refuses to open? You want to interface with it? It's sure, I'll give, some, I'll give some tech use on it, see whether I can discern what the fuck it's trying to say. Okay. Uh... Roll your end, the then. only side is testing us today. You get a plus 20, since this is very old so, tech, uh, you're very familiar with it. So my int counts as 60%. I yeah. think I passed that with a few degrees of success attached as well. You are able to actually not only access 
uh, the information from this door, but you're able to access the information for all of the doors in this room, as well as doors further on. You're able to read, this door actually says, to the canteen. Uh, and the other, so the door you're at says canteen. The door to the south says maintenance. And the door to the east says living quarters. In that case, in uh, Vargos's graveling voice, which is uh, a bit obfuscated by the uh, the grill unit he has, Canteen. Uh, let me select Canteen, Maintenance, Living Quarters. And about doors further on, like, can I tell where the canteen might lead to and stuff like that? You can see the canteen leads to some very big rooms. Uh, seemingly a dining quarter. But after that, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of data. It just seems to cut out at dining room. Can I force open this door? It you must succeed be an straight out. You've got control over it. You've, okay. you've okay. full control. In that case, I'm going to, since we discerned this, uh, do we still wish to go this way? Max, this is the others. Well, what are we, what exactly are we looking for here? Um... Mithras actually looks back at the data pad that he is holding. To me, this looks like a hunk say. of junk. Just says that we're supposed to reconnaissance, reconnaissance the Hulk. Doesn't give us any particular. In that case, we're going through the entire picture. thing then, and anyone we encounter needs to be dealt with. Yes, with extreme prejudice. Well, I guess we're going to be visiting all these doors anyway, so it doesn't matter. In that case, uh, Vargos is going to uh, command the door to open. And the door just opens. No competition. And you see down the hallway. He retracts himself from the terminal. Ethris is going to step past and into the... through the doorway. Marcus keeps to the back. Is there anything else in here? We you notice there is a very foul stench that slams into you. As soon as the door is opened, there is a very foul odour that hits you. Well, luckily, Mithras can barely smell anything. <laughs> so, this is how the canteen looks, ordering. just a simple hallway, huh? <laughs> oh no, there is a... sorry, I, that was okay. my bad. Uh, the great canteen guy yeah, that has sorry. a box. Right, okay. There is a way around. He's going to carefully edge his way around the corner. Right, and you peek around the corner, and you see this. Half open door. Okay, well, he's going to carefully walk up and peer through the. Right. The opening. Any reason for why oh the door my God. is stuck halfway up? Well, I didn't see that. Good. Mister <laughs> <laughs> actually takes a step backwards. Marcos peeks around the corner. Also it's as high. you're walking closer. Regardless of your sense of smell, you can damn well taste something. Damn. Okay. Um, and Marcus, do a perception around. check. And raise his hand. Do a perception check. As soon oh. as you look in the room, do a perception check. No. No. You, you just see this total room that's just full of destruction. Okay, he's going to raise his hand up to... Tell the other guys to stop. Then he's gonna very carefully inch forwards into the room. All right. Look around. And as you see, you notice something off the room to the left. You see this. What the? Zombies? Well, okay. Um. Combat? It doesn't see you. You want to? You want a real initiative? Um. Actually, no. He's going to step back, and he's going to move quietly back to the other guys and explain exactly what is down that. Oh boy, what do I need to roll for that? Roll what? For what? Sorry. Uh, you know, they didn't hear me coming, so I just walked back. Well, it gave no sign that it saw or recognized you. There are some horrible things through that door. It's, it looks like there is certainly something alive for us to kill. It looked like a, a zombie, I guess. A, a zombie? 
Yeah, a living form of rotting flesh. Well, uh, the Malgrisian tech tech teachings, and the Malgrisian teachings, the Malagos tech heresy, has totally prepared him for the situations like this for, or the situations that um, <laughs> folks sought to dabble into was animating the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Vargos is going to say any of this, but... <laughs> He, he handles it reasonably well, all things considered, and uh, he just shakes his head and uh, he utters something along the lines of... Let me pull up. Here we go. Um, let's see. Uh, foolish meat puppet. And he just starts clanking. With his axe in hand. And it's, let's stop, sh- stop. And with that, you notice the room moves things in the room start moving. Oh. Lots of them. And getting to their feet, or what they could call as feet. I now roll initiative. there were only one of these. <laughs> he failed his perception check. He turns around and shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> and turn on your grids. Hooray, oh. good time. Hmm. Now, if I remember correctly, initiative is 1d10 plus agility bonus, the 10's digit. Yes. Ah. I actually forgot to make an initiative tab for whatever reason, so uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Woohoo! Seven! Eight. Damn, that guy! <laughs> Fuck, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Activate the initiative table. Yeah, well. Hmm. That's something I didn't get taught how to use. But, uh, yeah, so I've got his in. Just add our tokens to the table, and we'll add the initiative scores. Does it count as a surprise round for the zombies? Uh, no. Although, to Vargos, it doesn't look like all of the zombies are staring at him. Just some of them. Just <laughs> some of them. When we've all uh, entered our scores, you can use the sort function to put it highest to lowest, and then just the uh, round to. All right. Move the initiative tracker. There we go. And have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, Manakai's character Marcus should be on top. Oh, if you're not that by yeah. by numbers. And Malakin's character, he didn't put in his number, but it'll be above Vargos as well. Sorry, I thought you guys put them in. My bad. Well, we're, we can put in the numbers, but we can auto sort it based upon number. Right. And there you go. So, uh,. In that case, Vargos is going to hiss back. There's more than one of them. All right. Um, I suppose Marcus is first. Hearing this uh, and seeing sort of the grim looks on on the others' uh, faces, he he draws out his auto pistol. And let's see here what actions I can take. Well, there's something here called an overwatch. And he would like to, if he can, just stay here. And if a uh, zombie moves into uh, this area, and his allies, of course, aren't there, uh, basically, if he can get a clear shot from here, he'd like to take it. If any zombie approaches you. Right. Yeah, so your kill zone is how far? Uh, basically this place. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Alright. You, you right must be everything. using this w- using a weapon capable of full automatic fire. Is that what the auto pistol is capable of? Full automatic fire? Oh, I fire? don't know if it's just semi. semi I don't know. Wait, for so Overwatch, it. you have to have full also? Yeah. You must ah. be using a weapon capable of full automatic fire to take That's this action. Mm. I think it's just semi fire you can do. Yeah. Oh, it's an auto pistol you've got. Yeah. But it's not capable of full auto, it's just capable of semi-auto. Oh, okay. Which I doesn't so. actually mean semi-auto. 
It's more like bursts of fire. All right. Do you want to redo it then? He could well, delay, he could aim. like use a half action. So before his next turn to take any half action, if a zombie comes into this corridor, you could also uh, aim as well if he wants to. Yeah. No, I'll just uh, I'll just um, actually draw my weapon and then delay. Okay. Well, um. I'm going to motion to Vargas as he looks over his shoulder uh, to like come back to us. So you've moved? Uh, and I'm going to move one step uh, okay. up there. And I'm going to... I can't do a uh, overwatch, but no, I can I aim. So I'll aim with the other half of my action. All right. That's fine. And Vargas. Okay, uh, Vargas is going to, uh, you know, get the idea that, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, so, uh, you know, maybe we should, you know, let them come to us, corridor, killing corridor, but, uh, so, do some of the zombies, at least some of the zombies, notice the fact that Vargos is there? Oh, yeah, you can easily tell. These two are motioning to start walking at you. Fantastic. These have your case, back to you. In that case, a uh, half move for me is three, so I'm going to go ahead and take a full move, and I'm going to, uh, step here and uh, turn back towards the door uh, watch fine. over these guys with my axe are each uh, of these supposed to be five units and no no there's just one okay. so if you've moved five they're just one sorry that's i should have I edited that feature but you should be able to change that pretty easily in campaign profit uh, properties uh last time i tried that caused errors <laughs> okay never mind i'll remember that for next time though um okay so is that your turn yeah go ahead and take care of my turn and you hear groans. Um, have you guys ever played Half Life Two? Yes. You remember no. the zombies from Half Life Two? Horrifying groans. You hear similar groans along the lines of "Help me! Help me!" as well as just groans, and they walk towards the door. Just shuffle to the door. And that's their turn. Um, is Vargas actually in the way of um, Marcus? No. Well, for in the way of Marcus, yes. Well, I'd assume this much. But you get a half action. I think action. the damn wall is in the way of Marcus <laughs> more than me. <laughs> but uh, you've got a half action to take, so it's your go. Alright, well, um... No, a half action um, any time before your turn, yeah, so before your actual actions. Right, so I'd like to I like to move then probably would be a good idea. Uh, how much is half my move? I believe it's just the boring three. Yeah, it's uh it's your agility, uh, ten, so three spaces for you. Yeah. Which is what I can move, so two three. You can move over here. Yep. I guess that's what we do. And you and get your filter. Uh -huh. Alright, that means I can uh, I can take a shot at this zombie, correct? Yes. Then that's what we'll do. And I believe my auto pistol allows me to take a full action to do a semi sort of burst. Semi auto burst, yeah. yeah. So you get plus ten to your ballistic skill and give me a second. Additional hit for every two degrees of success. Yeah, yeah, and give me a second. Just I don't to really make know what that means. Well, but. before you roll, I just need to see if there's anything else that. If you succeed, for every ten points you succeed, you by, get plus you twenty get as well because you're shooting with full automatic. So. I'm shooting with full. No, no you're so automatic. Semi-auto semi burst. Sorry. Yeah, so semi-auto burst gives him a plus ten percent yeah. to his ballistic skill, and for every two degrees of success. So say, what's your ballistic skill right now, um. automatic guy? It is probably not great. It is 28. Okay, so modified, you'll have a 38% chance to hit one of these guys. Now, for every two degrees, say you roll a 28, that's one degree of success. If you roll an 18, that's two degrees of success. And that means you'd score two hits instead of one. Right. So basically, These... I want to roll anything below 18 for a... good. So you, you don't roll anything below 38, so you can hit 38 or let's, lower. Uh, <laughs> let's just try it. Well, that's okay. a good roll. Oh, wow. Yeah. All the ammunition. Ten. See, that's two hits for him. 
but... If you fire at like semi-auto with three, and you only get one hit, you still use up three shots, right? Um, I think this one uses six, actually. Um, okay, shots. roll damage. With those three shots, I think. Yeah, because you've got... Yeah, that's... Yeah, three shots. I got three shots. Yeah, you hit them three times. No, that's not a full ten. So I think I just twice. roll okay. twice. Roll twice for your damage. Alright, yeah. I just don't have a macro for that, but I can roll it like this. Um, so is oh, wait, I have to roll it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, give me a second, I need to look up the critical damage list. I unfortunately didn't print that off because I thought that would be in what oh, I printed. Oh, was a horrible roll, the second one. Uh, Can't we just assume the zombie's dead? Oh no, it's <laughs> dead! It is dead! <laughs> I mean, uh, like, destroyed dead. <laughs> um, oh no, th th this is kind of dead where uh, I think you kind of painted the walls dead. Um, well, I'll tell you straight out because, you know, that's critical damage because you hit twice, so you did. Uh, Basically, the zombie pokes its head around the corner, and as soon as you see it, you slam into its head. Because I think, to decide where it hits, you flip it over. Yeah, and zero one is definitely targeting the head. Yeah, you basically, you did a straight head headshot, basically. And you actually not only exploded the head, you actually exploded the full body. The first shot pops the head like a melon, and the rest of the body just follows with the rip. Uh -oh. My phone's ringing, hold on. So that zombie just explodes. That's an impressive shot for such an... Yeah. And, well, um... Well, you're next, by the way. If... Because that's the full turn, so... You've got as many free actions as you want. You know, that, those still exist, and... Free actions is like talking and stuff. Well, Marcus would like to say, what are these things? This is... this is... I've never seen anything like this. In between gunshots. Okay, is that the end of your turn? Yeah. Okay, well, since now I can't see any zombies, um, I'm just gonna... Oh, you can hear them! <laughs> you don't oh, need to yeah, but you I can't can hear, hear them. So, I'm gonna actually delay my turn. Okay. What's the rules for that? Is it just... You get right a half turn next turn. Okay. Uh, if you give me a second... Uh, delay is a half turn to give your next turn a half action. So you still another, have another half action to take. Okay, well I'll aim again then. So I should get plus 20 on my next roll to hit. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm back. Yeah, you sh yeah, you'll have plus 20, I'll give Although you Although actually, thinking about it, you guys should really let me do the shooting, because I have a las gun. <laughs> and I'll be able to recharge um, my power cells wherever we need to. Uh, just to help out... See, um, does it look like I have a gun out? <laughs> <laughs> um, if Marcus said, what are these things? You know, as he was shooting it dead. <laughs> I don't. I don't suppose somewhere within my forbidden lore, like Warper Xenos, I'd be able to discern what the hell these things are, huh? Uh. Do a very easy intelligence test. Oh. Okay. Uh. That's plus thirty. Oh, uh, zombies. That's, a, that's a lot of degrees of success there. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, very easy is like what a plus twenty percent, a plus thirty percent modifier. 30. Yeah, and uh, my intelligence is 40, so that was acting with an intelligence of 70. Oh, okay. Well, you. You're able to tell that these are from the Forbidden Writings. These do not... These are people. They do not look like they are animated dead. It looks like they are living people infected with a disease. Uh, from what you can tell and from your knowledge, this looks like a very, very familiar and very n terrifying... Disease called Nurgle's Rot. Oh joy. Okay. Guess who's not not gonna use his axe on his <laughs> tank. <laughs> Argos is unamused. The fact that it's very familiar and very terrifying, he's not pretty happy about that. <laughs> so whose turn is it on the initiative thing? It says you. it's still Marcus's it's turn. turn. Oh sorry, I, that's my bad. In that case, uh, yeah, Vargos is going to put away his axe, <laughs> not saying anything about uh, what he has learned, other than 
don't get close to those and uh, draw his laser pistol. And I think that's gonna, just going to take up his uh, full turn since he's carefully putting away his axe and pulling out his laser pistol. Okay. That's... And uh, it'll be his turn then. All right. And you now don't hear screams of help. You just you know, you don't hear pleas of help. You hear screams, and you hear a lot of movement now. Uh, you hear bones cracking, you hear things collapsing and falling over, but they're moving quicker than they did before. They're not shuffling, they're moving quite a bit quicker now. And... They are now, instead of taking their half turn, they're taking their full action. And they are popping up. There you go. And... Marcus's turn. Alright, um... Mark is sort of... stands there, he's just shut one of these things. Still looking horrified, uh, he just... Uh... Well, actually, he aims for, uh... for the, the door. And, uh, that only takes a half action, correct? Yeah, aim, you can yeah. aim as a half or full, uh, so you can aim at zombie five and then fire a single shot at the same turn. Um, could I just um actually could I just aim and then You can aim as a full action, yeah, and it'll give you a plus twenty mm. percent to hit. To my next turn. turn. Yeah. So I'll you can that. aim this entire time and then next round you can shoot. I'll do that. Does aim work on one specific monster or do you just aim? Aim on one specific target. Fair enough. Um, oh, with extra well, shots from semi-auto and full auto, I think you can actually spread them around other um, targets, can't you? Yeah, but only if they're visible, I believe. Yeah. And just to say, um, I might as well shoot for, this thing then. For the sake, you can't see anything past this line. You can maybe see this guy, like um, Vargos, can see him. I should have told you to open that door fully. <laughs> I'd like to just uh, aim and shoot at this zombie then. Okay. So you get a plus ten. Is there something about range, actually? Uh, it's, it's in range. Might be important. There is, but he's definitely within your uh, your range. You won't suffer any bonuses or penalties. Right. So I think um, your range is like thirty meters. It's in range. <laughs> it's only like about six meters oh, well, away. That's a miss. That's definitely a miss. Oh wait a second. Uh, what quality is your gun? Uh, I have no idea. I just think standard. Oh, quality. never mind. You're fine. You were very close, but you're fine. Huh. It's in case your weapon jammed. That would be bad. I think we got this covered, actually. If they're having to come in single fire like this. I've always got a grenade as a backup. Alright. Then... So is it my turn, then? Yeah, my first. Don't Don't forget the warning, don't let them touch you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he nods and keeps that in mind. Um, Let's see. Um, I still get. I get to use my two aiming actions, so that's plus twenty percent aiming on a, uh, a semi-auto attack, right? Uh, if you're aiming, it's plus ten. Yeah, but I spent two actions aiming. Oh right. well, you get plus twenty then. So, I guess. Say so, yeah. So long as you spend your next turn attacking, yeah. Okay, and um, because I delayed, that means. I have an extra half action now. Wait, how did you do a full aim and then delay? Um, I think I was aiming, then aiming again. All right, so no, that took aiming, up your then entire delay, turn. Then aim. Okay, aim and delay. Something. All right. Because I haven't shot yet. Um, that's fine. I'll give you that. Okay, I'll do the uh, the semi auto then. You can see on the zombie. I can see. Oh damn. <laughs> Pew 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 pew! <laughs> you are an actual Imperial Guardsman! Congratulations! I am, I'm a, a real stormtrooper. <laughs> Storm them, please. Thank god this thing is reliable, because I'm pretty sure that would have been a jam. Truth and flesh, only betrayal. Mithras looks sad and nods. He is one of the few uh, sk Skitari or how have you pronounce it, that don't have horrendous augmentations. 
All right. Only because I couldn't afford them. <laughs> and Vargas. Half action aim at zombie five. Other half action fire at zombie five. That is even with the aim. That is a miss. Hmm. Okay, I think we may want to start considering um, running away. I thought Gatsman didn't run. <laughs> yeah, but there isn't a uh, a commissary around, so. <laughs> From I'll this rotten cage of biomatter, Machine God set me free. Zombie's turn. And Zombie Five is going to charge at Vargos, which um. I'm trying to remember what a charge would be, yeah. Must move 4 meters Just and plus 10, 10 to weapon yeah. skill. And give me a second. Miss. Oh, thank god. I thought I was going to have to try to dodge, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a miss. No, no, my character is just a guardsman at the recruit rank. Um, I was referring to stormtroopers from uh, Star Wars. There we go. Um, as uh, more and more of these things uh, appear, uh, Marcus sort of looks at his allies, looks at the these, these crazy monsters, and then looks looks back uh, back this way. Uh, well, should we retreat? Let me try this first. Um. And he uh, puts his hand on his grenade. I guess he can't do anything next to this in his turn. Okay, I'd like to delay. Can I do that? Uh, is there any penalty for delaying? Mm, you just use no, up a half turn. It only takes up a half action, so you still have another half action to kick around. Like delay only like takes a half action. I'd like to. I'd like to delay them. Okay. So what are you going to do with the other half? Uh, yeah. Well, we'll see. Depending on what Mithras does. So you still get your other half to do. Yeah, but don't I save that for later? Isn't that the point? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You've used one half, you've still Manakai's got the other half. Right. Manakai's right, he's using a half to carry over his other half. Ah, uh, that's how it works. So when oh. do you get to use your delay? Is that at the start of the next round? I start no, when, when time before oh. your next turn. Okay. So pretty much, I, I'm I'm probably going to do it when, when your turn ends. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so it's my turn then. It's either um, run or fight. I need to decide, do I want to set them on fire? In which case we get burning zombies, or do I just want to <laughs> blow them up? Um, I think blowing them up is probably a good Keep idea. Keep in mind what we're on. <laughs> it's the canteen, what's flammable in the canteen? Do not the blow a hole in the ship. <laughs> you are on a Space Hulk. <laughs> I don't think this grenade is going to blow a hole in the side of the ship. <laughs> Did you see how old this thing is? <laughs> But well, fine, get eaten by zombies then. Um, no, I'm gonna throw the grenade. Um, I'm gonna aim it just about. Uh, what's the yeah. range? What grenade is it? It's a fragmentation grenade. Um, the range Dude. is based on my character, and it is. Let's see, I've got it written down here. How many squares away is that? You can use Fry grenade has a range of four. Here. Um, so that's medium range, sh between short and medium range. So I guess that'd be standard range. So I don't get any penalty for that, I don't think. No. Oh. So I just need a hit. <laughs> oh dear. If you it'll end up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got the scatter diagram here as well. So. Oh, I've got a scatter. Um, what's it? Yeah, I've diagram. got the chart. So I'll know roughly where it lands and roughly where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on your degrees of oh fuck. <laughs> well, this is good. Don't um, just drop it, right? It's scattered south. It's scattered south. That's lucky. <laughs> um, yeah. How far does it scatter? Uh, I think like an additional square every time. I don't know exactly the scattered rules. I don't know, I'm trying to look it up myself. I've got Even some catfish fucking threw hallucinogenic grenades the first time we played. I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um. Ah, uh, shit. Got these grenades. I've got to throw them, man. I can't figure out what the scatter mechanic is. I'm assuming you throw it, you just throw it the wrong way. Well, let's say it's an additional square for every um, 
Every degree of failure degree of is failure. one degree closer to you then, I guess. But you you try okay, let's just say you threw it six, but every degree of failure is one square closer. Closest to us. Yes. Okay. So it scattered south? You threw it four squares, so you threw it to about there. So one, two, That's three, lucky. four lands. Because it has a blast radius of three. <laughs> um, so it lands here. And it explodes one, two, three, four. So it'll hit four targets. You wanna roll damage? Uh yeah. Uh, the damage Holy. is 2d10, um, and it's explosive damage. Alright, let's see how this works. Fourteen. You turn them into Giblets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, first off, Vargos is just covered in Zombie 5. Vargos um. is extensively irresistible. Undeniably unamused by this current situation. Um, yeah, it's like it basically its entire body just exploded on you. God, <laughs> I have this respirator unit. Fuck. <laughs> it just winces a bit as it explodes after having bounced off the door. Uh, the door creaks, <laughs> uh, having from the explosion. But uh, you see that you killed four of them. <laughs> yeah, it could have gone worse. <laughs> it's a good result. Any grenade throw you can walk away from is a successful one. Oh wow, I'm glad you have the bandolier <laughs> in your possession. <laughs> Thank God for that. Alright, and... Oh, who's that was Mithras, so Vargos' turn. Sorry. So does Zombie 3 have full cover? Can I not see him to shoot at him? Oh, you can see him. Uh, thanks to the creek, he doesn't have cover. He's not in cover. Alright, so, uh, after that wonderful experiment, I, I don't Wait, suppose... Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Isn't it Marcus's half time? No, I'm waiting. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. I'll just interrupt. Any time before his next turn, he can take his half action to do whatever. Okay, okay. So, um, so, uh, so the, the, the Space Hulk that we're on, it doesn't look like it was immediately destabilized, it doesn't look like klaxons are going off, we're uh, about to jump into the fucking void. Uh, How does well, the ship look immediately after that? You can tell, like, you... Basically, it filled up with a ton of dust, a ton of smoke, explosion, and blood. Uh, lots and lots of, well, blood, um, quote marks. Uh, and it looks as if it just went through an explosion. There's bits falling down from the roof. The walls look as if they're blown out. Uh, the door looks as if it's seen much, much better days. It, you know, it, it looks as if, you know, a thousand years was like a paradise compared to what it looks like now. I mean, it was not a door built to withstand an explosion. It's not like I threw a debt pack, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a Hulk that's thousands of years old. <laughs> Does it look like we're about to get, like, fucking destabilized and ejected out of the space? Like, there's no whistling sound no. as we start flying towards the hole? Okay, no. um... <laughs> it Vargos does... Is, you're okay. able to see the, into the framework of the walls, but you don't see any, like, you know, destabilizing damage. It's okay, yeah. there's rules about dying in vacuum anyway. And so Vargos activates his, you know, fucking wipers. <laughs> <laughs> Someone suggested in the chat. Fucking. <laughs> and as he's taking aim at Zombie 3 to fire, he's like, he says, If I was you, I would never do that again. He <laughs> fires at Zombie 3. Which, even with the aim, is a miss. Damn it. Alright. And. That takes care of his turn. Okay. And the zombies. No. Uh, just start. Continuing on. They're shambling this time, though. They're not running. Well, so, no, they are running. Screw that. They're still running. And, of course... Oh, shit, there are two zombies stacked on top of each other? Fuck! We're dead! <laughs> yeah, let's get rid of that corpse. Who's there? I don't think there's much of these corpses left. Yeah, you've actually made them all pretty much explode. <laughs> it's like, I'm, not... There's not, I'm like, just a sort imagining, of... like, Half-Life at the moment. You, where there's just multiple skulls coming out and stuff. But you're gonna use your half action to shoot at Zombie 3 before your turn rolls up, mana guy? I am, I am. So if they're done now, mm -hmm. I'd like to do that. Oh, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's not a good um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what? I need to look up your gun. Uh, give me Auto a pistol. Uh, I know, but I'm looking up quality, because if it's poor, it would have jammed. He said yeah. it was common quality. 
Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure the exact jamming rules uh, for. What have we done? <laughs> no, what it have we done still jams. This? It jams. Your gun is jammed. Right. It's okay. If I it's can poor quality, yeah. it miss. If it has a chance of jamming every time it misses, if it's poor, or it jams every time mm. it misses. Uh, See, but, but oh, it's common, so it's like on whenever you roll 96 to 100 for that. Yeah. I can so, actually use my technical knock to... An unmodified roll that. of 96 to 100 weapon jams, full action, and ballistic skill test to clear. The fact that you know technical knock is highly amusing. <laughs> I know it's because you're from a forge world. It's like, Vog uh, it's like Vargos is going to see you do it. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, a, no a knowledgeable spack on the side. <laughs> how much did it take to clear it? Uh, it takes a full action. I can well, actually... I think I can fire and give you my lance pistol in the same turn, which might be better than me trying to unjam the gun. I can't use lance pistols, and and in fact, Marcus doesn't know much about this, so he's got, just going to try unjam it with his turn coming up. Uh, I don't know what test that would be. Well, ballistic skill. I know, but I, I don't know how difficult that would be. Oh hey, what am I doing? We're fighting zombies, and I'm not using my shotgun. <laughs> it doesn't have to be difficult for me to fail. Not really good at that. All right, well, so that's the zombies' turn done. So, hmm. Marcus, it's your turn. Yeah, okay, I unjam um, my gun. Yeah, you unjam it. <laughs> Luckily, I'll just because uh, I don't know if that would have been a challenging roll to you. Well, actually, it would have been challenging. Let's just say that it's a zero. There's no penalty and there's no benefit. All right, I can do it. I'll need to figure that out for later. But to be fair, there's a lot of combat rules. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the exact jamming mechanics either, so I can't say whether that's a no-no or not. No, I, I looked up the sheet, so that was the jamming rules. And I know for a poor weapon, it's every time it misses. So if you've got a poor quality yeah, but I mean, weapon... like, for him to unjam it. Yeah, right, okay, sorry. Like, I didn't know whether that's something he'd actually be able to do on his own within his turn or not. Uh, I'll just give it to him, this one. So he spent his turn unjamming and he succeeded. Right, well, I'll look it up. While the other guys do. Okay. All right, uh, Malikin, what you got for us? Okay. Well, I'm not gonna bother switching my shotgun. How cool it would be. So I'm just gonna uh, fire at Zombie Three with uh, a full action. So that's semi-auto. Okay. Please hit. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't think that hit. No. <laughs> you're doing, you're doing, a, you're doing the service prowess. Maybe I should throw another grenade. <laughs> well, the grenade, you got the most kills so far. <laughs> I'll just put this over here. I think we're gonna need some EXP for this if we survive, so we can level up our ballistics. <laughs> I think, I think what I'm gonna need to do is fucking move away so I don't get my ass charged again. Even if I take out Zombie Three, Zombie, it's gonna be like Rarf! can't charge you. It needs That's to go right, four squares. A little bit. Maybe we should retreat back to the other door and lock it. We kind of have to clear all this out. This is our orders. We have to yeah, kill everything. Yeah, we can come back order. from a different direction where they're not quite as in our face. They so haven't my touched turn? you. Uh, yeah, it's your turn. Okay, I'm just. Uh, I'm not gonna aim. I'm going to uh, just half action fire at Zombie Three. Okay. And then I'm going to use one of my fate points to re-roll that ballistic skill test right. out of my three. God damn it! <laughs> So you got two left. Let's say, let's say three shots, all misses. Other half action. Do 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 do. do. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with the zombie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, if Vargas could get back. This obviously isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and zombies. Don't kill me. And Zombie 3 is actually going to attack Mithras. And hits for one unarmed damage. That doesn't even go through my flak armor. Then he just smacks your armor. <laughs> Donk. <laughs> uh, just sort of lightly slaps me. And this one's going to charge, so he gets plus 10. And misses. Whew. There you go. That's the zombie's turn. Marcus. Wait, hang on. When are you firing at point blank range then? What is point blank range? 
within Simply three meters. within three meters. And half range gives you a plus ten, I think. Oh wait, point blank gives you a plus twenty, I believe. Uh, now you know for the future. Yeah, so we should be getting a lot more extra. Oh, it gives you a plus thirty. So it's a plus twenty for half range then. Is it? Uh. Pardon? Half range or less? Is it point uh, blank? I think it's Point blank range. range is plus yeah. 30, but there's none for plus 20. Oh, stuff. shooting a target at short range is plus 10. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, there you go. It wouldn't have changed your rolls any. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so uh, I'm actually now in close combat. Huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep in mind that you'll be firing into a melee as well with your close combat. <laughs> Not to mention, he will get an attack against you, I'm pretty sure, since you're going to be using a ranged weapon in its face. Oh, like you have a chance... Oh, I forgot to say this. You can actually um, try and parry the attacks. He you... he can't parry attacks with his gun. Oh, that's true. But he can dodge. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. He can dodge. You can dodge every attack. Dodge. Yeah. You can dodge once per round. Okay, what's the dodge? Dodge is... But you didn't get hit. I mean, yeah, I know, but I was just it. wondering what dodge is. Dodge is a basic skill to test agility. If you don't have it, then it's just half your agility characteristic. Oh, so... A very slim chance to dodge an attack then. Okay. Yeah. Well, what are you doing, Vargas? My turn. Uh, Marcus sees Vargas move, and, and he doesn't spend any sort of thought before he just, you know, the guardsman is, is holding holding these things back, so there should be no fault in moving. Let's see what my full movement is. It'd be six, right? Unless you run. Yeah, I I suppose so. Um, well, what would I get? Why wouldn't I run? Well, run would just, uh, it would give you a bonus to avoiding ballistic skill attacks, but on the off chance that someone encountered you in melee, you'd have a penalty. Like yeah, I'm gonna run them. There's yeah. no reason to. But they'd allow them. you to move 18 squares. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can run really far. <laughs> I guess this should be fine for still shooting. Yeah. Um. Don't shoot at me yet. <laughs> Sort of making a little noise with this heavy armor. Okay. Um, they get attacks of opportunity. I take it if I move out of close combat. From yeah, both of them. They get would unless you did a full action disengage, which would allow you to move up to a half move. So you can move three squares with a disengage. Uh. That's not exactly going to help a lot. So screw it. I'm just going to take the risk and run for it. So a full action for running. And my run Full action for running. distance is... Should be the same as us, because we each have uh, three 18, yeah. digits, yeah. You get a penalty for running if they melee attack against you, don't you? Yeah, they get plus 20. Yeah, yeah they oh. get plus And they get another bonus because there's two on you. Can I do... Ah, oh, man. Thanks for running away, guys. Um, hey. Um, Thank you. Thanks for not killing them with all of your semi-automatic <laughs> fire. <laughs> thanks for staying behind. <laughs> I needed more DACA. Um. Hey, you said wait until you threw the grenade. We waited. <laughs> <laughs> I failed to see the problem. <laughs> okay, let's see. So I can, if I move away, like at a normal move speed, they just get the advantage of ganging up on me then? Uh, yes. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, hmm. six. Um... One fails so bad. <laughs> he did <Wow>. no damage. <laughs> and a horrible roll. How much damage can these things do? Or are we not allowed to Apparently, very little. It's like they have to beat our armor value, and because they, they use just hands, uh, the armor counts as double, right? Oh, wow. You know, actually, I should have been able to hit one of those zombies earlier because of point blank range. I'm glad I know that now. Yeah. So Again, it's, I'm, we're all learning from this. Yeah, I know. I just forgot about it. So, uh, Mithras is done with his turn? 
Uh, yep, I can't do anything else. Can I? Alright, no. okay. Can Vision I shoot either one of these zombies action. from this position? You can shoot three. Okay, I'll shoot, uh... You'll have a minus ten penalty to shooting it, though, because we're, you know, it's behind another zombie and it's covered. <laughs> Damn it. Unfortunately, that is just outside my point-blank range. Fuckers. Okay, You'd get uh, the uh, same penalty for zombie eight as well. Yeah, but I'd totally be cool, because he'd be in point-blank range. <laughs> just telling you. All right, uh, go ahead and shoot it. Oh wait, so I can shoot at zombie eight or zombie three? Yeah. They have the same penalty. Yeah. All right, in that case, uh, half action firing at zombie eight. He's in point blank, so it's only a plus twenty percent with the mm -hmm. minus ten penalty instead of plus thirty. So I get plus twenty. That is silly, <laughs> miss. <laughs> you basically smack everyone. Everyone, whenever, whenever I'm playing as Vognar, is like, you cheat, you cheat, you such a cheat. <laughs> Jake's fucking smugging at me with Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the problem is we're fighting against the, the luck vampire here, Griffin. Uh, <laughs> very good point! I'm so, sucking uh, it all from you! Shot four, <laughs> that's 26 shots left. Half action, move. In turn. <laughs> Alright, and the zombies are just gonna keep chase. They're actually gonna run at you. Hmm. They're fast zombies? Uh, you get an, uh, does he get an attack of opportunity? Mithras. If he's running to there, then I think he does, but he doesn't have a melee weapon to take it. I know, that's I can still attack him with a, my rifle. The butt yeah, of your rifle? But you, you, that's something that you need to check on specifically for uh, moving in that situation. Okay. I don't think I don't think uh, Man uh, Malakin can engage him in melee, because you can't engage with me unless you want to swing your weapon like a club. <laughs> hey, the, it's a last gun. It's designed for that. Um... Do you want to give it the stats of the club, then? I don't think that then? would exactly be useful. Um, hang on. I think there's a there's a rule for um, whacking someone with the butt of your gun. I'm trying to find the bloody page there. Though. But I don't know what page that's on. You take your time. You Probably look for that. I'll page. just continue moving the rest of my guys. So, one, two, three, four. Well, you know, Mithras is getting charged at by zombie eight. Miss. <laughs> Can Let's he go. do that with such sharp turns involved there? Well, he's basically just running from there, so... Meh. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. He'll just run to him. And... Uh, let's see. There we go, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Go ahead and step, mm. uh, step away to get a drink while uh, Malakin's searching this up. Don't worry, I won't bother. <laughs> just right. in place, it's taking way too long. Okay. Probably okay. won't even do anything. And... Marcus. Alright, um... So they're not technically engaged in melee, right? <laughs> no, you're not. They're running up to you. Well, the thing is, I think it would be easier to take these guys on... It's just running up to me, so I'm not it's in melee. Just, it's basically, it's just you know, running at you as you're taking your turn kind but of thing. But you'll, you'll have a penalty to hit them, because they'll have a plus 20, you'll, you'll get like a minus 20% to ballistic skill penalty because they ran, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, what do I get for point blank range? Plus 30. Probably plus 30%. Right, so so that's you get plus 10. Like better. Plus 10, yeah. So if I aimed and shot, I would get no penalty. If you aimed and shot, you would You'd get, get a plus 20%. 20. Because you're at plus 10 already if you shot. You're at plus 10 from point blank range for the fact that he ran. So aiming as a half action and then shooting would give you a plus 20% bonus. Not that it would help because we keep missing anyway. <laughs> Can't I just shoot it, shoot it twice without aiming? Yeah. yeah. I think that um, would be a. a you can only shot. take a single shot. Uh, hold on. Well, I might as well aim and shoot it. We're, we're not awesome enough to be shooting multiple times. Right. I'll just uh, aim and shoot it with a plus 20 then. Okay. That's a hit. Uh, yeah. That's what, 17? Almost not a hit. Yeah. That's uh, a hit. So that would be. Let's see, where's and yours? Damage? I think. Six points of damage. 37 inverse to 73. Oh, where's 73? Uh, I think or so. 73. Uh, right leg. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, it's very, that. very heavily wounded. Well, it's worth a try. Hey, you hit it. That uh, that counts for something, man. That counts for something. Yeah, I think it's time to change to my sword. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull out my sword if there they we keep go. catching up with us like this. So it's yeah, actually terribly wounded, actually, in 
this. So we've got two options. We can either retreat behind the door, close it, and then come back from another direction, or we can try and fight them in melee. Yeah, it's heavily winded. Yeah. Vargos is kind of splattered and covered in, uh, in gore the way it is. <laughs> I don't think short of them actually piercing through his toughness would get much worse for him. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're even going to get through our armor, especially since I think they count as primitive attacks. Unfortunately, I only have armor on my torso. I'd have to rely on my natural toughness bonus. I'm heavily armored. I should be. Able to armor know. points count as double in addition. Yeah, armor bonus counts as double uh, versus primitive, right. unless we had primitive honor. They won't get through. So they won't even hurt us. So if you just get away, we can take these guys on in close combat. Right. If or you the can end them. Alright. For the Omni Sire. And Mithras. Right, well, I'm gonna um, um, draw out my sword with my right hand while holding my last gun still on the left. So, and since it's a one handed weapon, I'm pretty sure I don't get any penalties for this, right? No. And I believe that's a half action reading a weapon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll then strike um, standard attack, I believe. Hang on. Where is the close combat rules? Do, do you have to put your weapon away too? Or can I, you just I think put you it in can, the I other hand? You can dangle it off, but uh, for me, I have a two handed axe. That's just oh. why I swapped the way I did. Yeah. You can always just switch, shift hands. Yeah. I could <laughs> yeah, have my dropped last gun it, is just but hand. didn't feel like dropping my freaking weapon just in case we had to pull back. You just keep the pistol in the off hand. Why can't I find the close combat attacks? Right, it's making me the attack with the handle weapon. Uh, to be you're making a weapon skill test. Yeah. That's what you're doing. It's just like shooting. 26. Oh my god. That actually hits. Not to um, mention, he's outnumbered 2 to 1 there, Zombie 3, if that's who you're attacking. <laughs> um, yeah, I might as well be. Okay, yeah, well, I you get. I say who, so. So that's a. You get plus ten percent bonus. No, it's two and one is plus ten. Yeah, plus ten. Sorry. Yeah. All right, but it didn't matter. He still hit. Okay, anyway. so I needed to sum the hit location. And that's inverse. So twenty-six is sixty-two. Is that still right arm? Or uh, right? sixty-two is body. Nice. How much damage? Um, I believe it is since they don't have any armor on. It's one d ten plus three. Yeah, your strength bonus. Yep. Oops. There we go. Six. Uh, you play golf with its body. <laughs> <laughs> I run through. Uh, you smack it and it just caves in and collapses. He needs Killing to slice it. things with swords. Uh, okay, good. Uh, I believe that's the entirety of my round then. Alright. Because I think right, yeah, ready to go up in his half round. So, Zombie 8, he's not engaged in melee. No. I can shoot at him just fine. Yep. In that case, he'll be in point-blank range. Shot number five of 30 <laughs> shots. Directed at Zombie 8. Well, that's plus 30%. And, yep, you uh, hit. That's actually a hit. So and I uh, hit him for six damage. Uh, it is... Heavily winded. All right. I'm then going to uh, exchange... Uh, putting my lace pistol away, I'm going to uh, pull out my axe. Okay. Finish my turn. And zombies. So that'll be zombie eight on Mithras. Now watch the minus two damage. <laughs> <laughs> what? You <laughs> gain wounds. <laughs> you do not heal. <laughs> it actually bandages me. <laughs> <laughs> the glorious That's touch nice of it. Nurgle. The, the zombie slowly massages your skin. <laughs> <laughs> it basically it's just rubbing its its hands on your armor. Hold the purity Missing. of convalescence. You do not get healed. <laughs> Alright. And. It'll run to there. So you get an attack of opportunity. Okay. Yeah, we'll if go it runs, it. he gets bonus, correct? He gets plus 20, so 6. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That zombie was so fucking hit right there. Um, 19 damage on that motherfucker. Describe that hit. 
You like, sit the motherfucking down. <laughs> the rending power of the Great X. So 42 is body, right? It's still body? Uh, actually, mm, yes. Yes. Okay, so, uh, Vargos, you know, he's trying multiple shots of his laser pistol, trying, you know, play strategic, not getting any more blood and guts from the these animated creatures on him more than what is already had. Those are the wipers. Um, so, if you actually want me to tell you, you did uh, 12 <laughs> points of critical damage. So, it's pretty easy. A zombie or whatever the hell it is that's still alive, it's still animated, is running up towards him, and Vargas is like, alright, we'll try a different tactic. And, uh, yeah, he shouts something like, uh, I think we'll say something that, THERE IS NO TRUTH IN FLESH, ONLY BETRAYAL! And the uh, the mono great weapon, good quality axe, just goes cleaving this uh, this animated body in half, and it just falls down, splurting blood over towards the guy that hit him with the grenade. <laughs> <laughs> and all right. <laughs> and okay, Mithris, you take your attack of opportunity. Um, against a well, either or well, you can take so against one. That Seven, probably. Oh, oh right, yeah, one. I you can see seven there. Okay. You can attack one of them. Well, I hit with a one because I was rolling. The other one, uh, and I'm keeping that damn roll. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I a one. Nice. Oh, Is uh, that a critical hit? No, you just do so many stages of extra. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a critical hit. If you rolled a ten on one of your damage dice, then you'd go into righteous fury. That's what determines critical hits in this game. Ah, right, damage, not to hit damage. Which is why, which is why I actually designated my damage dice separately, because I rolled 2d10, and any one of those can put me in Righteous Fury. Uh, you yeah. also, um, what is it? You, you how many stages of ex excess do you get? You think you get an extra hit, don't you? I don't uh, think so. No matter how many degrees of success you get a hit, it's still a hit. Uh, well, 7 is winded. When you rolled a 1, I mean, you can make a special ruling for him rolling a 1 if you want, but no. according to the... Can I just yeah. kill it? Doesn't really right. matter. There's not gonna Can I just obliterate again. both the zombies? <laughs> just like a I world just, I, of death. <laughs> no. Right, okay, so Marcus, you go. You can attack of opportunity on seven. Well, I, I don't have a melee weapon ready. So oh, okay. Can't. Fair enough. And Marcus. <laughs> well, I'd like to take my ready my melee weapon, my my mono sword, and cut zombie seven. All right. Let's see here. Uh, that's ah. a fail, I think. Yeah, it's one above my. So. So you miss. Yeah. Just. Wait, he still ran. The zombie ran until his next turn. So it's it. Oh, huh. okay. So you so hit. Yeah. Damage. Right. All right. Let's see here. The damage of a sword. I thought Grimith is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sword. Try. Damn it. One d ten. Plus yeah. your strength bonus, which is what two, three. Uh, that would be three. Alright, 1d10 plus three then. I, was, I thought I saw 33 there and went, what? <laughs> 33 damage to the zombie. <laughs> oh, the zombie right, just carry. Make another weapon skill test. Make another weapon skill test. Fail. With, with uh -huh. the... I say, even with him running. Damn it. Still no, no that's 28. So he'd get it, because he's got a ballistic skill of 28. Weapon skill. Weapon skill of 32. So. Yeah. In that case, roll another no. 1d for damage. No, I'm going to tell you, one? it's dead. You could roll another one if you want to super overkill it, but it's dead. I need dead. to roll another another damage roll? Yeah, if God, you yeah, want. Well, you might damage the not space the three, Not the plus 3, just a 1d10. <laughs> Alright. Oh my god. So, 22 damage. It time. had one hit point left. One. Critical damage of 21. <laughs> you did 20 critical damage. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and and in this he screams, uh Describe your kill. Well, alright. He has just seen this this um this tech priest sort of uh mocking the flesh that is that is humanity uh while displaying prowess in combat. And he's this this makes him angry. This is a, a direct uh, provocation uh to his physical being and uh and as such, he takes out his anger in this this beast, fueled by by the anger and, and the power of his uh, of his favorite saint, uh, Saint uh, Drusus. Uh, he screams, uh, "For the emperor!" 
for em- for the empire and humanity as he as he brings down this this uh this sword just cleaving cleaving the the chest of this this zombie sort of in half uh, as the severed part uh, flies off in an arc Mithras gets covered in blood again <laughs> right. spurts all over him all right and um, Mithras okay I'm gonna make a full attack on uh, zombie eight with my you sword. get plus 20 nice this better bloody will work watch the roll 100 <laughs> oh, almost <laughs> <laughs> I miss and Vargos well uh, regrettably I uh, see there's a dead corpse is just waiting through the blood it's gonna take me a half action to move alas Right, half action move, other half action will be uh, to swing at Zombie 8, who's now engaged in 2 to 1. Yep, plus 10. Holy shit. Uh, I don't get the Righteous Fury. I, it didn't qualify, but I still did 14 damage. 13 total. points of critical damage, describe your kill. Do you know, <laughs> you did enough damage to turn him into a bloody mist. So as it turns out, uh, Vargos and Marcus here are having with these one of those sorts of spats. Like, okay, we both kept missing with our pistols. But let, let, let's see uh, whose faith is strong. <laughs> <laughs> Vargos opened it up. Marcus counteracted, but uh, Vargos is like, all right, all right, let me do this. So he steps up again and uh, shouting something along the lines, uh, "We'll go." Uh, there is no strength in flesh, only weakness. <laughs> The great axe goes flying, and I presume 35 reverses the 53, so another body hit mm-hmm. clefts the, uh, the this other animated corpse again. It falls down. Gore goes even further. Yeah. Argos's robes are just it's, covered. It's pretty much just sprayed blood all <laughs> over this place, really. And he's going to say something after the fact is, and here I thought we weren't supposed to engage these guys in melee combat. <laughs> And it it actually just flies back and smashes into the crate, really. Well, what remains of its body. And end of combat. Right. So it just look before you, you know, as mind. as you're taking your breaths and you know after smashing those final three, uh, you notice the blood isn't actually the color of blood supposed to be. It's not a dark red. It's actually spinges of green. It's, it's greenish red. It's really quite weird to look at. It looks more like goo than it does blood. Wonderful. That's something that uh, that uh, Var- uh, Vargos is familiar with, being you know technology-wise and some uh, forbidden lore. But medical shit, you know, anatomy? No, not so much. He doesn't care about the flesh. All right. Now you guys can free roam if you wish. Marcus uh, looks like he was actually getting pumped up to do this. Um, as he moves a little little further, uh, looking around the corner for more of these uh, these creatures to continue the spree, because he feels like Vargas had a little had a little victory in destroying the last one, and uh, and he in fact doesn't doesn't like the the idea of that. But as there are no more, he sort of scuffs a little and and put his uh, puts his oh, no. uh, his weapons back. Argos lets out a low mechanical chuckle. Um, server's just been disconnected. Uh, just reconnect. It was just yeah. you. He might have to be booted, I don't know. Oh, no, he was able to connect just fine. Hooray! I'm in black. Alright, I'll bring you back over. Um... Does the blood look like it's doing anything on the ground, other than just being all pretty and it's red and green flecks, or is it's, it, like, is it coagulating? It's not co- It's, you know, it is thickening. It's drying in the atmosphere, but it's not Six. moving, it's not pulsating, it's just... It looks as if blood has been spilled on the floor, but it actually looks like it's more gooey than blood. It looks like snot, actually. Like forming another zombie, liquid metal to T-1000 emerges. <laughs> well, actually, if you roll a perception check... No, no. <laughs> no. Um, Jed! <laughs> well, Mithras is going to be wiping himself down from all this goop getting out of his skin, and he's going to, while he's doing this, ask Vargas, you told us not to get close to them. What do you know of these creatures? Only and uh, he uh, he he flexes uh, one of the zombies down. He picks out of his axe. Only that they seem diseased. But he looks at Mithras. That again to me, all flesh appears to be that way. 
it's just not. <laughs> he understands that point of view being from a tech, uh, a forge world. Okay, okay well, I'm going to uh, sheath my sword and start walking back down this way. As you're leaving, um, you hear something lightly thudding against the door you came from. It's and behind us? Behind you, Wait, you what? hear something. It's not steady, you hear something smacking on a door behind you. Just um, the, a knock, more like... But coming from behind you. Um, can I, can I, um, actually, can I, is it, is it possible to, since, since it's easy to shift, you know, change weapons between hands, would it be possible to, to have the sword in one hand and the pistol in the other one? I think you take a penalty. I think well, you not would, using them both. So, yeah, I think it should oh, be fine. For walking, you're fine. But in yeah. combat, you take a penalty. If you were trying to attack with both, because we each have our own hand, unless you're ambidextrous. Right, right, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I just have my pistol in the right hand and, and sword in the left. It may need to change if see, necessary. See, I don't know whether it would take a half action for you to swap hands with those two weapons, though, I with would. some for Griffin. Yeah. It's readying a weapon, I'd say it would. But yeah. still, it's easier than... And it makes sense. I'm not You're out of it. combat. You don't need to ready a weapon. He's no. saying that you, he can keep the mountain, you know, just for something in combat situations if we get into it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He just wants fine. to have his character be that way with both weapons out. Oh, that's fine. I'm um, hearing this this thud. Uh, Marcus sees a new new point. He's still sort of worked up about this combat. He's he so so he sort of uh, gets a little excited. Uh, these things did not this a challenge. So he sort of walks, walks to the door. Is did Mithra see is, this, or did he just... Oh, you can hear it. It okay. echoes down the hallway. It's not locked. There is no door here, is there? No, it's open. All right. Well, do, I'm going to take see a... It? So it's, it's, you can see it at the side. It's open. I'm going to quickly check this room to make sure there aren't any more zombies. Yeah, you don't see anything. Okay. And then he just heads back. Who's knocking on the, the door? <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> All right. The knocking continues. It's, there is some slight mechanical time. There is a very distinct gap between studs or knocks. Bar uh, Bargos is going to suggest, do you want to clear the path that we were on? Or do you wish to inspect this? I think, we should oh, yeah. go ahead. I think we should lock the door behind us and keep going. Marcus looks at the others who are not, not being perceptive enough to actually make out the the sort of time between the, the knocks. Um, he, he looks at them and says, we were ordered to clear the ship of heresy, were we not? Yeah, but we don't want to risk becoming surrounded. We've cleared out more of this side of the ship than we have that side. As you're talking, you hear very, very quietly... Very quietly. Does it sound just like the zombies? Sounds similar. At this, Wagner is going to. Uh, Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> Wagner <laughs> pulls out his big mace. So someone definitely did that in the chat. Uh, say, uh, yeah. Morning Star, Battle Axe, uh, it's all the same thing. Uh, Vargas is going to science it. Well, we were ordered to help everyone according to the information. Hmm. Very well. Let's deal with this this abomination. Oops. As the doors float around the room. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Shit! The kind of uh -huh. emperor protect us. <laughs> it, it has emperor been in the warp. Indeed. It has been in the warp. So. Yeah. So, uh, so which, which door was like? This uh, time? Can I sorry. discern a direction? Give me seconds. Uh. Oh, God damn it! Where, give me there it is this door. I suppose like a team because shit just got real. Actually, um, actually, Marcus points to this this door over here, this doorway. It says if you go in there, we won't be surrounded. As I'm gonna assume you're walking up to the button. Yeah, I'm going to interface with it and close this. There is door. no power to the button. It's Why is there no power to the button? Uh, from what you what? can tell, the grenade destroyed the power conduits <laughs> to the door. 
Everything is my fault. I understand. Vargos is going to lean 